As a mobile operating system, Android has to deal with limited memory resources and the operating system has to carefully monitor memory usage and uh, takes important steps whenever the memory becomes low. My name is Sagar and in this video we are going to discuss how your device is going to react when it is running low on memory. So Android platform runs on the premise that free memory is a wasted memory. With this rule in mind, the Android operating system always try to allocate available memory all the time. Now this is a very cool and awesome technique because the system can now keep your recently used applications in memory so that whenever you are switching back to recent application, it will be very quick and without any launch delay. Anyways, the memory is there to be used by the system, right? And the operating system uses it very efficiently. But uh, what if the entire memory is used? How can you open more applications? Don't worry, Android manages that too. The operating system will itself clean up the memory whenever it feels like it is running low on memory and it uses two important concepts for it. First, KSwebD and second, LMK. But what are those? I'll explain you in this video, watch till the end. But uh, first let's understand the basics. So what are the types of memory present in your Android device? There are basically three types, RAM, ZRAM and storage. RAM, you already know, fastest but limited resources and is generally used for cache memory. You also know your storage where all your persistent data will be stored. But what is this ZRAM here? It is a partition of your RAM but for swap spaces. Swap spaces, that means some of your pages, some of your memory from your RAM can be swapped with this ZRAM. And whatever is present inside of this ZRAM will be in compressed form. And uh, whenever you are taking anything out of ZRAM, so that will be decompressed. So what is this thing that you are swapping from your RAM to ZRAM and vice versa that are called as pages. So your RAM is divided into very small, 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 small chunks of memory that are called as pages. And each page is generally 4 KB. So the memory in your RAM or we can say the pages in your RAM can be either considered as used or unused. And if some pages are used, so those can be either used by some known process. Suppose there is a process A that is using the page number 145. So that page is used by a known process or there can be some pages that are used by unknown process or we can say anonymous allocations. That means there is some part in your RAM that is allocated by some unknown process, some anonymous process. And then there is some part that is allocated by some specific process that we know. So there is some page that is used by some known process and uh, that uh, process is using this page as a cache memory. So suppose this is the process here. It is storing something in the cache memory, for example, the thumbnail of a video or an article. So if this page is owned by a single process that is called as private cache and if there are suppose multiple processes, so there can be two processes that are sharing this page that is called as shared cache. So if a single process is using a page that is called as private cache and if two or more processes are using that page in RAM, then it is called as shared cache. For example, there can be multiple apps that are using Google services. For example, location service can be used by different applications and uh, the cache of uh, these Google location services are stored in this page. So this page is considered as shared cache. Okay, and if we go into more detail, then there are clean cache and dirty cache. Clean means there is something in the storage, for example, a thumbnail that is directly copied into RAM for easier and faster access. So that is clean cache because the same thing is directly copied from our storage to our RAM. So that is clean. But uh, if there is something that is present in our storage and copied to our RAM and then after it is modified. For example, there can be some data that is present in the storage but uh, once it is loaded into RAM, the user has modified it. So that is called as dirty cache. So I hope these things are now clear to you. So these are the things that I just explained. Pages can be either of known process or can be from anonymous process. And if it is from known process, then it can have a private cache means there is only one process that is accessing that page. And if it is shared cache, that means multiple processes are looking at that cache. And then there are different type of cache, either it can be clean, that means directly from our storage, or it can be dirty, that, is, that means modified version from our storage. So these are the important concepts to know before starting with low memory management in Android. So Android has two main mechanisms to handle these low memory conditions. First is KSwapD, that means kernel swap daemon. So as you can see it is a daemon, that means it is a process or a function that runs to clear our memory. 
and the main function of this case web d is to reclaim or clean pages by just deleting them so you already know what is a clean page so suppose there are some clean pages here and uh, they can be either from a known process or from any anonymous allocation so whenever the device is in low memory condition and how the device will know that it is in low memory conditions so the linux kernel itself stores the low and high free memory threshold that means when the level of our free memory reaches some specific point reaches the low memory threshold then the kernel will just trigger this case web d so this case web d will be activated and it will check for all the clean pages present in our ram and it will just start clearing them one by one so it is just clearing all the clean pages and then there is another threshold that will tell our kernel okay now the enough memory is cleared and now the case web d can stop so this just deleted some pages from our ram but our applications were using that cache memory so the data is lost now no the data was already present in our storage and uh, whenever the application again again needs the data so that data can be again fetched from our storage to our ram yes it is more time consuming but it is what it is we have to take this trade off to get some free memory and one more thing when the process is demanding the deleted cache and uh, when we are getting the cache back from our storage that is called as demand paging so just a little concept to remember the process is demanding the deleted pages that's why it is called as demand paging and if this was not enough to get the free memory so case web d can also do one more operation so we already handled these clean pages but there can be some dirty pages too so what we can do with these dirty pages we cannot delete them right because this is some modified data by the user and we don't have to just delete the modified data of user so what we can do we can use this zram so this case web d can swap the private and anonymous dirty pages from this ram to zram and uh, we know that uh, anything is in zram then it is in compressed form so think it like this i am using one application so that is in foreground but uh, there are some applications that are in background and uh, those background applications are having some dirty pages but that background application do not need those dirty pages right now so what the case web d will do for those background application it will check if there is any private or anonymous dirty pages are present in ram or not and if there are any dirty pages for those background application it can move those dirty pages to zram and uh, suppose i am getting back to those application so i need those dirty pages back right so that is simple i can just get them back from my zram so when they were in zram so they were in compressed form so that means some memory is saved so when all of those dirty pages were present in zram that means more memory is saved because they were in compressed form so just remember these are the two main operations of case web d it can move dirty pages from ram to zram and it can also clear the clean pages it can delete the clean pages but suppose you are using a very slow phone suppose just a 2 gb ram phone that means deleting these clean pages and moving these dirty pages is not enough to just run one more application so now you have to take a major step of killing the processes so just like our case web d there is also a threshold for triggering this lmk that is low memory killer and if our free memory is uh, below that uh, threshold then uh, this lmk will start and uh, it will just start killing the processes okay so how this lmk is going to kill our processes just uh, randomly killing no so this lmk uses an out of memory score that is also called as this here you can see so using this the lmk can recognize the applications that are important or have some priorities for the user for example background app na they are not important for the user as compared to other so suppose there is a previous app previous app means that is most recently used application so the user has more chances to go to the recently used application instead of other application that uh, the user might have used a long time ago so these background apps have a high score and a low priority high score of out of memory and a low priority for the user so if the device is low on memory all these applications is uh, is going to get killed one by one and if still there is low memory then uh, this application is also going to get killed and then the home application has even low score home application means the launcher where you are seeing the wallpaper in your device so that is the next to be killed and uh, then you are not going to see the wallpaper and then the next priority is a service that might be uploading some data that might be doing some background operation or syncing some data so all those going to get killed 
and after that these are perceptible apps means uh, there can be keyboard there can be some bound service that is showing some music that is playing some music so all those are gonna get killed and after that there is a foreground application that the user is currently using so that is also gonna crash so remember all these are not gonna occur at once if after removing all the background application there is enough memory then the lmk will stop if still there is not enough memory only after that the lmk will move to this next stage and the same for others and uh, after killing the foreground application still if there is no enough memory then uh, we know there is some problem then uh, the android device will start killing their services like bluetooth wi-fi internet and telephony all those services are gonna get crashed and then there is our system server and once it is killed the phone will just reboot and uh, at the end we just have these native features in our device like the bootloader and the case web which are kernel level things so this is the priority table for lmk to kill the processes but how it is going to kill any process you know when any process is running so it is having some space it is having some memory in our ram that means it is having some allocated pages in our ram so suppose there is a process here and it is having some allocated pages inside of ram so if the lmk has to kill this process so it should know what pages are being used by this particular process so these are the pages so either they can be private pages or there can be shared pages so that means these pages can be also used by any other services or any other processes right so how the lmk will know which page to delete for deleting this particular process and for that we have three ways here they are rss means resident set size means when we are using this rss way then the lmk will consider these pages that means the specific pages used by this process and the shared pages that means which are being shared by other processes also let me just uh, get a good diagram here so here you can see this is the app that the lmk wants to kill and uh, this is some other process that is just running and these are the shared pages that are location service or any other service so with this rss way we can consider all these pages that means the pages of this application and the shared pages also all these are gonna get killed uh, that is not a good thing right next is this pss that means proportional set size that means non shared pages plus some proportion of the shared pages and what portion the equal distribution that means these are the pages that are shared by two processes one is this gps and other is our application so four pages are being used by two processes that means four divided by two that means two pages all the pages of our current app and the two pages from the shared is gonna get cleared if the lmk decide to kill this application let me give you another example so suppose there is three processes that are sharing three common pages that means there will be considered one page for each process in this proportional set size and uh, generally this is the ideal condition to do because uh, all the applications pa pages is gonna get deleted and this app is also using some services so we can also clear some of the service that is we can also delete two pages and uh, the last one is i hope you guessed uss that means unique set size we are going to clear all the pages used by only the application we are not going to touch the shared pages that is it now lmk has uh, killed some of the processes and uh, now your device will have some memory and uh, now you can run your applications so i hope this video is helpful if yes then make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for awesome content and thank you for watching